can lift your voice and praise your God, praise your King, your Lord, your Savior, the one who delivered you from all your trouble, the one who died for you. Lift your voice and praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise Him, praise Him, lift Him up and glorify His name. We come to the same God that we praise all the time and present our prayer because we know that whatever we put before him, we will receive the answers. Hallelujah. This morning, we don't want to take leadership for granted. We want to thank the life, thank God for the life and the ministry of our general overseer and the senior pastor, Dr. Utabel. Our prayer is that God will continually grace him with wisdom, with good health, and with favor as he continues to bring leadership and vision to the world. Kindly lift up your voice and begin to thank God on his behalf. We stand in agreement. We knit our hearts together. We join our faith together. We say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for giving us such a leader. We thank you for giving us such a leader in a time like this. We are grateful, Lord. Thank you for his leadership. Thank you for his ministry. Thank you for his life, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for using him as a blessing to his generation. We thank you, Lord, for using his life to transform other lives. We thank you, Lord, as he moves around, bringing leadership and vision to our generation. We pray, O oh God, that you will be a blessing unto him. You will grant him favor. You will open new doors. You will create new opportunities. You will grant him good health in the name of Jesus. Perfect health for his body. In the name of the Lord, wisdom, wisdom, divine wisdom, the spirit of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, you will cause him to be increased day by day. In the name of the Lord, with wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, we pray, O oh God, that your grace will open doors and create opportunities. There will be divine protection over his life. Your angels will protect him, O oh God. They will ascend and descend on his behalf. In the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, he will lack no good thing. You will be with him. You will strengthen his body in the name of Jesus. And you make all things to work together for his health. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for favor. We thank you for protection. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to pray for a supernatural wealth transfer for the church. The body of Christ needs the money to build the kingdom of God. And you want to declare that when the Lord shakes the heavens and shakes the nations, all things will work together for the good of the church. Kindly lift up your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for wealth transfer. We already thank you in advance because we know you will do it. In the name of Jesus, supernatural intervention, supernatural intervention in the finances of, our, of the church, of the body of Christ. And so we call for wealth transfer. In the name of Jesus, wealth transfer, wealth transfer for the church, for the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the shaking of the Lord will cause all things to work together for our good. In the name of Jesus, the shaking of the nations, the shaking of the Lord will bring to our bosom that which is needful for the kingdom business. In the name of Jesus, we declare a shaking. The shaking of the Lord will create wealth transfer. In the name of Jesus, wealth transfer, wealth transfer. In the name of Jesus, financial favor for the body of Christ. Financial favor, financial favor, financial favor. We declare wealth transfer for the body of Christ, for the building of the kingdom, for the expansion of God's work. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Finally, you want to claim God's blessings of return, of recovery, and of restoration for every area that you have experienced a setback. There will be a restoration. And you want to declare that as you become obedient to the voice of God and walk in faithfulness, the Lord himself will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You will lack no good thing in life. Kindly lift up your voice and begin to pray. You can lift up your hands and receive the blessings of God. It is coming to your bosom. It is coming. Lift up your hands and receive. Receive from the Lord in the name of Jesus the blessing of good health. The blessing of return, the blessing of recovery, the blessing of restoration, it is coming to you. Every area that you have experienced a setback, get ready, get ready, get ready. 
get ready, get ready, get ready. The blessing of return, it is coming, it is coming. The heavens are opened over you. The blessing of recovery, you will recover all. You will recover all. You will recover all. There is restoration. The Lord is restoring. He is restoring. He is restoring. In your obedience, you will attract the blessings of God. There will be an overflow. There will be more than enough. You will not lack anything. In the name of Jesus, there will be more than enough. There will be more than enough. There will be more than enough. The Lord will supply. He will provide. He is your provider. Never ending source of your resources. The Lord will open the heavens. He will load you. There will be abundance. In the name of Jesus, he will supply all the desires of your heart according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not according to your desire. Not according to the environment. But according to his riches. We give you praise and give you glory. We honor you, O God. And if you believe God has heard your prayer, go ahead and celebrate his victory. Church, whenever we come together, we have a duty to sing the praises of our God. And this morning, with the strength and the power in you, we join endless praise and we sing the hymn. I'm oh, sorry. We will take our Christian creed first before we sing the hymn. And let's affirm the foundations of our faith. Let's say it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And put your hands together and celebrate that victory. It is the foundations of our faith. And now we join endless praise with the power and the strength in you, and we sing the hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues.
church, we will always sing the praises of our God because we were nobodies, but his blood availed to make us somebody. We were sinners, his blood made us righteous. And so anytime we rise, we sing the praises of our God because he has made us who we are and he will take us thus far. Lift your voice and give God praise. If it had not been for the Lord, where would you have been? The Lord has been gracious and his blood has made all the difference in our lives. Turn to somebody and tell the person, neighbor, the blood of Jesus had made me righteous. I am a child of God and I will always sing the praises of my God. Do you believe that? Give God praise and take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And on behalf of Dr. and Mrs. Otabel, I welcome you to Christ's Temple of the International Central Gospel Church. I also welcome all those worshiping with us online from the various continents of the world. We trust that your life will not be the same as you receive everything from this service. It will inspire faith in your heart and cause you to live a victorious Christian life. In Jesus' name, amen. It is time to honor the Lord with our offering. A time of offering is a time that we show how much we honor God, how much we respect him for all the things that he has done for us throughout the week. We come to say, Lord, we respect you and we honor you. And as you prepare your offering, I want you to reflect on the words from Exodus chapter 35, verse 5. Exodus 35, verse 5. It says, take from you... Um, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze. This morning, your reflection is, whatever you are giving is an offering to the Lord. And the second thing is, is it silver? Is it bronze? Is it gold? You are giving to honor God. And as you give, reflect on these Words from Exodus 35, verse 5. Kindly fill out the relevant details on the offering envelopes and indicate your mode of payment. For those watching online and those who prefer digital giving, I want to encourage you to look on the screen and select the op options that have been provided and follow the process so you can also give to Anna the Lord. Helping us with a song ministration to receive our offering, we receive Sela bringing us the song, He Was There All The Time. Time after time I was searching for peace in my life. I was trying to blame all my ill sin, this world I live in. Certain relationships used me until I was down. But all this time, someone was waiting to free me from all.
One more time, let's appreciate Sela. <laughs> Kindly stretch forth your hand toward the offering as we pray together. Father, we are grateful to you for giving us the opportunity to come and sow into your kingdom. These envelopes represent our seeds to the kingdom of God. We pray, O oh God, that you will receive it. Let the heavens be open as it is put for the work of God. You will open the heavens and you pour us a blessing. And so we declare that this week we will lack no good thing in life. And in addition, you will grant us that which money can never buy. In Jesus' name, amen. First fruit. Oh, be excited. First fruit. Hallelujah. Every first Sunday of the month is our first fruit day in this church. We believe that throughout the month, according to scripture, God has given you the wisdom. He has opened opportunities and created doors for you. He has given you access. He has delivered you. He has helped you to work and to get the blessing. And so the first Sunday of every month, we come and we honor God with the best of our income. That is why it is first fruit. First is the best. So the best of your own income you bring to honor the Lord. And uh, as you come this morning to honor God, I want you to reflect on these words from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruit of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vast will overflow with new wine. As you honor God, the months ahead of you, God will also honor you. He will open the heavens and pour you a blessing in abundance and there will be an overflow in your life. Hallelujah. We give our first fruit in an envelope like this and I want to encourage you to put it in an envelope. If you don't have it, the ushers will give you one. Fill out the details behind the envelope and if you don't have first fruit number, I will kindly uh, ask you to go ahead and give, but after service, you can visit the front desk and they will issue you with a first fruit number. And subsequently, you can pay with the first fruit number. If you don't have your first fruit here, don't worry. In the course of the week, you can bring it to the office and we will receive it and pray with you. Or even on Tuesday, you can bring it to church and you can give to be a blessing to God. So God will also be a blessing to you. Let's kindly rise if you have finished filling out the envelopes. And I want you to lift up your envelope to the Lord 
and just talk to him. Whatever blessing you expect in the coming month, you want to talk to God and say, I come to honor you. You say, when I honor you, you will also honor me. You will also cause there to be an overflow. I don't know what kind of over overflow. You may be expecting overflow in the area of health, overflow in finance, overflow in education, overflow in childbearing, overflow in marriage, overflow in anointing. Whichever overflow that you are expecting, the Lord will release it to you. Just speak to your first fruit and say, Lord, by this first fruit, as I honor you, I am also receiving from your presence that which I desire to have. We thank you, Lord, that you indeed open the heavens and there will be overflow in our lives. We give you praise and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We will come dancing and rejoicing as the praise team lead us.
Hallelujah. We will be praying over the first fruit. And uh, I'm sure you know that yesterday, the 31st of August, was the birthday of our senior pastor and church. I want you to lift your voice and shout the birthday. Happy birthday to our senior pastor. We love you so much. We are grateful for God for giving you to us in such a time like this. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. We celebrate you, Doc. We celebrate you for what you are. We celebrate you for what you are to us as our great leader. Over the years, he has led us with integrity and with honesty. Hallelujah. And Doc, we join the millions and the billions of the world, those in the Christian kingdom and those outside the Christian kingdom. And we wish you happy birthday. We declare this prayer in Psalm 128 for you. We say, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat of your labor, of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion. And may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. And peace be upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. We declare these blessings to pursue and to follow after our pastor in Jesus' name. Amen. Our senior pastor, Dr. Utabel, and the wife, Lady Joy, are not with us. They are on ministerial assignment, and they will be with us very, 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 very soon. In their absence, they've delegated the pulpit today to one of the most senior ministers in ICGC. He is the person of Reverend Anthony Kujo. He is the pre a member of the presbytery. That is the governing body, administrative body of ICGC. He is the regional overseer of Accra South region of the International Central Gospel Church. And he is the senior pastor in charge of Calvary Temple. Instead of Jesus going to Calvary, Calvary has come to Jesus. And he is here with his beautiful wife, Mrs. Teresa Kujo. And church, after the prayer, we will receive the ministration of Reverend Anthony Kujo. Let's kindly stretch forth our hands towards the first fruit as we join our hearts with the pastors and ministers as Reverend Asibuyate prays for us. Shall we pray? Father, we are grateful unto you for your goodness and your mercy that has followed us and has made us bring our first fruits unto you. Yes, we therefore this morning stand on your word in Genesis 28, 15. Thus saith the Lord, I will not leave you until I have done all what I have spoken to you. Lord, in the month of July and August at Greater Works, you spoke to us this morning, honor your word. Amen. Honor your word. Amen. Honor your word. Amen. Do it unto us according to your word. Amen. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Whilst we remain standing, we take our wisdom declaration. So, we go now. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. By wisdom, he has founded the earth. By understanding, he has established the heavens. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Today, I incline my ear to the instruction of the Lord and my heart to his spirit. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. In him, 
are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I have the mind of Christ. His word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Therefore, my steps are ordered in righteousness. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. His wisdom and knowledge are the stability of my life. Today, I declare the word of the Lord. I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for me. I am blessed in Christ. Salvation, favor, and increase are mine. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Please take your seat. Good morning and welcome to church. It's good to be in the house of God and I thank God for the life of Dr. Witterbell and Lady Joy for this opportunity to come and share with you. And we all rejoice for the birthday of our general overseer. And um, I just want to say that this one is not a birthday. It's a bad year. Because 60 is historic. It's a landmark. And we should do whatever we can to make it continuous for the whole calendar year. Until he is 61, every day will be his birthday. So we have entered the birth year of our general overseer. And we are going to celebrate it a year long. I thought I would get a better response. So it's not a 31st August affair. It's a season that we must respond appropriately to. Amen. Amen. Today I'm sharing on what I call seasons and assignments. Seasons and assignment. Seasons and assignment. And when I talk of seasons, I'm talking of times. And then when I talk of assignment, I'm talking of task or that what you have to do. Because assignment is sometimes also a legal term where we have a deed of assignment and I sign no. But this one, it's assignment as what we know. Homework. So I'm talking about times and work or seasons and assignment. Amen. Now, all of us are aware that life is ruled by seasons. And your activities are always determined by which season you find yourself in. There's a time to wake up. There's a time to sleep. When you see the moon, it tells you what time it is. When you see the sun, it tells you what time it is. So, seasons are determined by signs and indicators. In the days of Jesus, he rebuked the Pharisees of his time and said that when you look at the weather, if it's lowery, you are able to tell whether it will rain or not. And he said, you can tell the signs of the weather, but you cannot discern the season. Referring to the time he came, and expecting Israel or the people of his day to have understood the season. Because any time you don't understand a season, you become a victim of it. And sometimes it is when the season has passed, then you discover that I think I should have done this or done that or done that. I pray God that will be able to discern and know the season we are in. Your yeah, amen is weak. Yeah. Amen. So every season comes with indicators. Now seasons also offer opportunities and challenges. But then it is possible to ignore or fail to see the season because of misinterpretation of its sign. So you can enter a season and if you are not able to interpret the sign well, you can think that it is not the season. There's this popular story of 
a man who represent a certain manufacturing company. In fact, they were dealing in shoes. And this man was sent as a marketing man, salesperson, to go into a community to find out opportunities for marketing. And it is said that the first person who went there saw that the people in the community do not even wear shoes. All of them walk barefooted. So he saw it and said, these people don't even know what is shoe. We don't need to waste time to come here because what we are bringing, they've even never seen it before. So he comes and said that, I don't think there's any business opportunity in that community. As a matter of fact, they don't even know what is shoe. Then they send another person. He goes into the same community and sees that the people don't wear shoes and say, wow, what a space. What an opportunity. What a market. So two people were sent to go and see the same thing. They interpreted it differently. There was a sign that shows there's an opportunity for shoes to be sold. But because the first person could not interpret it, that which was supposed to have been an opportunity became a challenge. This morning, I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to know the signs of the time and to rightly interpret it so that we can appropriately respond to the demand of the time and the demand of the season. Amen. Every generation or people and what God uses them to do. And the opportunities God gives you or God gives us and the assignment that comes with it determine how you will be judged or promoted. Now, what happens and how people see it is always the issue. I believe our generation is blessed. And somebody like Dr. Otabel in our life is even an indicator of a season. Every message he preaches to us at any point in time is an indicator of a season. Because he's a whistleblower. He tells us, let's move in here and it's a season to turn and move. So leadership is a season indicator. Now, if you are in hospital, when the doctor appears, you know it's a season for inspection. And sometimes when the doctor is going to come, they will tell people who are visiting their patient that, please, doctor is coming, so visiting time is over. I want you to know we are in a new season. Christ Temple, we are in a new season. ICGC, we are in a new season. And it is my prayer that we will respond appropriately to that season. Now, seasons are normally characterized by need. When you see a need and it makes a pull on you and it gives you a burden to rise up to the occasion, you find out that this is the assignment God has given me for this season. In the Bible, you will find out that various people God called at various times all had a season they represented and they had assignments specific that they did for God. Moses was called when Israel needed intervention to come out of Egypt. And the Bible said he did that and did it effectively. We have somebody like Nehemiah that we're going to read a little about. Nehemiah whose time he heard of the broken walls of Jerusalem. And I want us to just look at um, the scripture from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Amen. Now, if you read Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 1, are you here with me? Say season. Say season. Say assignment. In Nehemiah chapter 1, Verse 1, it said, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakilia, it came to pass in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, 
the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The walls of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are bent with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days and I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. So this is Nehemiah minding his business. He was in a good place. The Bible says he was the cupbearer of the king. But then his normal routine was interrupted because of a news he had, information that got to him. And that information was about the kingdom of God, was about his people who have returned from captivity, the survivors. Then he asked them of Jerusalem. And the Bible says when he heard the report concerning the state of his brethren and the state of Jerusalem, immediately he discovered that this is a new season and this season is calling me to rise up to the occasion to meet a demand. The Bible said he immediately began fasting and praying. Christianity is always a response to a need. Say respond to a need. And the need you respond to is the need that God causes to come to us at the right time in our time and in our generation. And those are the things that God will use to assess us or to judge us. So if you hear of a broken wall, it's like, is it just for information or it for action? Is this just for your briefing, but it's for a response? When Nehemiah heard this, the Bible says immediately, say immediately. Say immediately. And it is my prayer that any time we hear the word of God, or see a need, or see something breaking forth, may the Holy Spirit communicate to us rightly. And may we be able to respond appropriately so that we we'll do that what God expects from us. Say season. Say assignment. And I want you to understand that what we are doing whilst we are alive, another generation will come after us that may do something else. But it is all in the mind of God. So Moses brought Israel out of Egypt. A Joshua came with another generation that take Israel into the promised land. Then other people came out. We call them judges. And judges came and, that, and, and did other things. Then prophets and priests came. Then kings came. Now, there's something Jeremiah, uh, Nehemiah did that I want us to look at further. Let's go to ne Nehemiah chapter 2. Just a little about his action. Chapter 2. He has prayed and he has gone to the king and has sought for permission. Say permission. He has sought for permission. This is somebody who was responding to a need because of the season. And he has gone to seek permission from his employer and he's been allowed to go into Jerusalem. So verse 11 says this. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 11. It says, so I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Then I arose in the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well and the refuse gate. And view the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and eat gate which were burnt with fire. Then I went on to the fountain gate and to the king's pool. But there was no room for the animal under me to pass. So I went up in the night by valley and viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered by the valley gate and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others 
who did the work. Then I said to them, You see the district that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste, and its gates are burnt with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Somebody say, Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. Say, Season. Then he said, and I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. Now, I want us to look at Nehemiah's example. How he responded to the need. He heard the state of Jerusalem from a reporter. But then he saw it at God putting it into his heart. And the hand of God being upon him to respond appropriately to this challenge. Amen. I believe as a church, especially Christ's temple, we have such a glorious opportunity with our building that is coming off. How many of us are where we are building a new auditorium? Oh, wave your hand if you're there. Amen. Amen. This week I visited the site and it's awesome. And I'm just dreaming when it will finish and the day we will move in. It will be a great move. I say it will be a great move. But what I want us to understand is that such a facility or such a project comes to tell us of a season that we've entered in as a church. And I want all of us here to understand that it's a season we've entered in and the assignment God has given us is to build him a house. I thought you would clap for that. I say, I thought you would clap for that. And listen to me. If you know whose house you are building, you will feel it a privilege. You will be excited for the honor, for the opportunity for the God of gods and the King of kings to allow you and I to be part of something that will be raised to his honor. And church, I came to tell you it's an opportunity. It's a season. It's a task. And we are going to rise up appropriately to respond to it. You know, God in his wisdom has a reason why he does what he does in the way he does it. Two reasons for prosperity. Two reasons for prosperity. How many of us want to prosper? And why do you want to prosper? Is it to drive another car? Or get a new mobile phone? Or maybe have another mansion? You get all those mansions. But you see, two reasons to prosper. The first one, in Deuteronomy chapter 15, God talks about a year of release and he said that if there's any poor person among your brethren within your gate, release him and give him enough. So our first reason for the believer's prosperity is to help the poor or the needy. Say to help the poor. Say to help the poor. Because the Bible says, God said, in Deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 9, he said, for this reason, God shall bless you. So anytime you see a need is a season that God is calling you to respond to. In fact, Jesus said, in Matthew 25 said, on a day where he will separate the sheep and the goats. And he would tell a group on his left hand and said, I was sick, you did not visit me. I was naked, you did not include me. You didn't include me. I was hungry, you didn't feed me. Then he said, they will ask, Lord, when were you sick? When were you hungry? Then you say that, that what you did for the least of these ones, you did it unto me. Which means any time you get an opportunity to do good, do good. Because the opportunity God offers you is the opportunity he will use to judge you. 
God is not like some teachers and some examiners in West Africa where you didn't finish the syllabus and they set questions on what they didn't teach you. So anything God is going to judge us on it means he gave us the opportunity. I had a story of somebody who said that he was taken up to heaven and he was interrogated. He said he was teaching in Sunday school and at a point he got angry because he felt God hasn't dealt well with her. She was sick and God had not healed her. So he said he wouldn't teach in Sunday school again. So an angel came and said, why did you stop teaching at Sunday school? Then she narrated her reason. Then the angel said, wait. Then he said somebody appeared and it's like Jesus. And he said, in fact, he said when you go there, he mentioned the name and he checked. The rooms there, the houses, everyone has a name attached to it. But he saw that her name was not on any. And he said he was told that, you know what? We are making you go back. And this is why you are going back. There's a certain madman within your vicinity that you have been feeding. Because of that, you are going. But when you go, go back to the Sunday school. Talking to you right now, this, the person is a minister of the gospel now. And when I heard it, it's like, listen, there's nothing you do that go unnoticed. I'm sure he was just taking care of this madman out of compassion, but she didn't know that it is being mad. Amen. So we prosper to help take need of others. Then the second reason for prosperity is for the house of God. Say the house of God. For the house of God. God said when you bring the tithe of the offering, you bring it so that there will be meat in my house. And in Haggai, God was judging the people at that time. He said, why are you enjoying your sealed houses, panel houses, and my house is lying in ruins? Which means that generation had opportunity to build the house of God. They knew they should do it, but they even felt it was not yet time. So they relaxed and said it was not yet time. They said it and God said, why are you saying that? Is it time for this? So their priority was misapplied. And what I am praying for is that we will not misapply our priorities. Amen. That we will read the signs rightly and properly interpret it and rise appropriately to build God this house. I thought I would get a bigger amen. 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 So we prosper for the poor. We prosper for the house of God. Now, anytime God wants his house built, it is his people that he joins hand with for them to build the house. Now, watch this. The night of Passover when Israel were leaving Egypt, the Bible said God gave them favor to go and take gold, silver, and a lot of stuff from the Egyptians. In fact, it was their end of service benefit. And it was a favor God gave them. Could you imagine your house health comes and says, boss, give me the key to your Mercedes, the S-Class. Then say, take it. I mean, what's what? Even bicycle, when he takes it, you will question, hey, Atenga, where did you go? Now he comes and say, give me this and you give. It was a favor. So Israel left Egypt with substance because God had told Abraham, he said, your seed will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. They will serve them. They will afflict them 400 years. And afterwards, they shall return with great substance. Now, Israel left the Red Sea. They left Egypt. And the next community they went, there were no shops. In the wilderness, there were no shop, no supermarket. No boutiques. But they had gold. Hot for. They were not going to buy anything because even when they were hungry, God was giving them manna. But there was money on them. Hot for. Say his house. Say his house. So when they came out, the first thing God asked them in Ezra chapter 25, he said, Moses, tell Israel to give me offering 
and collect this offering and make a sanctuary that I will come and dwell among them. Which means when they were taking the booty from Egypt, God knew that I'm going to need this for my sanctuary while they live. Now, if you study worship, the flow of worship, we have the altar, the tent, and the temples. Before God asked Moses to build the sanctuary, Abraham, Noah, Isaac, Jacob, they were erecting altars. But then, Israel is becoming a nation, and they need something more institutional that everybody can relate to it. So God said, let them build me, let them build me a sanctuary. And inside this sanctuary was the ark, which is embodiment of the power of God. So when Moses used to use the rod, this time Israel is coming with the power of God. And this power of God is captured in the presence of God. So when they were crossing the Red Sea, it was the rod of Moses. When they were crossing the Jordan, it was the ark of covenant. So God said, you left with my power, but you are entering with my presence. But my presence should be accommodated decently. So, anytime Israel came, in fact, when they were even going for battle, the presence of the ark of God was a sign of God's presence with them. But then you find out that with time, God begins to move from tent to temples. So this is Christ's temple, isn't it? And you know we have an altar here. Hello? Oh, this is the altar. When we do altar call, people come here. People bring their babies to be dedicated here. People bring their marriages here. This is the altar. But this altar is the temple. And God has given opportunity to do another one. Say another one. Say another one. There was a, gener there was a generation who did this one. Thank God for them. I'm sure some are still here, but to some of us, our portion is to do multiples. And may we rise up to do it accordingly. Amen. Amen. So the new one, God said, this is a new set of people. This is the assignment I've given them. So they're going to do it. David in his time was a successful king. But one day he sat down and said, wow. I'm living in a very good house. But the ark of God is in curtains. In fact, when you read Samuel, 2 Samuel, David told Nathan and he said, there's something in my heart. I'm living in a panel houses. I'm living in a seal house. But the ark of covenant is living in curtains. Curtains. So I want to build God a house. So it was in the heart of David to build God a house. He saw a season. It's like when I see where the ark of God is, it is ministering to me that a season has come that we should find something decent. We should find a place more attractive for this ark, the presence of God. The Bible said, God said, well, it's a good intention, but David You've done so much in other areas, but this one, I want your son after you to come and do it. Amen. Now, I want us to look at the attitude of this man. Nehemiah responded appropriately. David responded appropriately. But if you look at David and the preparation, say the preparation. Say the preparation. David and the preparation he made and the way his people came on board. It is something I want us to copy. It is something I want us to emulate. It is something I want us to imitate. Because in life, copying is good, isn't it? I mean, who is here who haven't copied before? It is only in examination that copying is wrong. But apart from that, copying is everywhere in life. Amen. Somebody will do Honda, another will do Hyundai. <laughs> so we are copy. You are copy. If people travel, they see it, they come and they repeat it. Sometimes people copy raw, 
because what you copy you become and in case you don't know the devil copied God he found as an angel of light whatever he see God does he copies so God won't worship the devil won't worship there's nothing original that the devil created but a lot of things he is using because he wants to be like so I want us to be like the men in the days of Nehemiah you amen is weak I want us to be like men in the days of David now what was the attitude of this man watch this it took leadership to let the people know the season and I'm sure Dr. Tabel have sounded loud and clear in this house loud and clear I mean I saw the pictures it was going viral I you know this is a message there are a few Sundays ago everything was shown in here I don't know how you understood it but he is communicating that there's a burden there's a season there's an opportunity and let us rise up and build the amen is weak oh I want it to resonate. If you see it as an opportunity, shout a bigger amen. amen. Now, David, as a person, did a lot of preparation. A lot of preparation. Now, First Chronicles chapter 29. And I'll be a lot of fast. Verse 2, he said, Now for the house of my God, I have prepared with all my might gold for things to be made of gold, silver for things of silver, bronze for things of bronze, iron for things of iron, wood for things of wood, onyx and stones. I mean, and he said that. Verse 3 said, Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own special treasure of gold and silver then he give those things out now what it means is look at me for a moment what it means is that as a king i have saved with the state apparatus money or things that are needed for the house of god but i have not only used the national um, 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 um treasure to store wealth for it from my personal savings too. Say my personal savings too. Say my personal savings too. You know, I was preaching in a church and I was telling them that sometimes church members confuse us. Hello? My name is Anthony Kujo. Dr. Otabel is Reverend Minister Otabel. If it is Bible that you give to the church, I thought you say Amen. Then it is, it is also Bible that you give to the man of God. So I was telling them that sometimes you confuse us. When you bring the thing and say, this is something small for the work of God. Which one do you mean? Is it for me or for the church? Hello? Tell somebody, don't confuse the pastors. If it is for me, mention my name. If it's for Dr. Table, mention his name. When you are writing a check, in case you don't know, his name is capital M-E-N-S-A, capital O-T-A-B-I-L. You don't going to say, oh, for the church, for, I mean, for what? Specify. This church is Christ's temple. Write it on and don't confuse us. Tell somebody, don't confuse their pastors. Say, don't confuse their pastors. It is good to give to the church. It is also give to sow into the life of the man of God. I thought I would get a bigger Amen. Say we need to do both. We need to do both. I know there are some of us who love God. We love God and we love the work of God. But I'm telling you, the man of God is more important than the house of God. And if you like, I can prove it to you. Because it is the man of God who does the work of God. It's the man of God who effects the work of God. The Bible says that every house is built by somebody. And the person who built the house has more honor than the house. Listen, if you are clapping, clap so that I can go a little faster. Listen, Christ's temple currently was built by Dr. Tabel. It wasn't this building that made Dr. Tabel. 
If you move him here, he will build again. But this building can never make any pastor. So, God prepares a man and the man does the work of God. Amen. So, I know sometimes I confuse and we are doing this and we are doing that, but I came to tell you we are building, but if we have something to do for the man of God, let's do it too. Testimony, let's do it too. So, David said that from my position, my institutional position from the throne, from the treasure of the economy, I'm giving this. But from my personal account, this is my personal donation to the house of God. So David mentioned those one. But what I want us to look is the example of the other leaders. See, other leaders. And the general congregation. Verse 6 says, Then the elders of the father's houses, leaders of the tribe of Israel, the captains of thousands, of hundreds, with the officers of a king's work, offered willingly. He said they offered willingly. They gave, verse 8 says, and whoever had precious stones, gave them to the treasury of the house of the Lord, into the hand of Jehiel the Jezonite. 29, if you are there, let's read it together. Let's go. Then the people rejoiced, for they had offered willingly, because with a loyal heart, they had offered willingly to the Lord. And the king David rejoiced greatly. David praised to God. Amen. This is the attitude. Say this is the attitude. Say these people are doing something right. Say they are doing something right. It is stated in scriptures that we sow in tears and we reap in joy. So the Bible says, God loves a cheerful giver. But these people knew something we must learn. When they have been able to give to God, they felt happy. They rejoiced. Listen to me, church. Let's rejoice at the opportunity God has given us. Anytime this temple construction is mentioned, anytime we are called upon to give, and to support this work. Let us do it with rejoicing. You amen they didn't come. Don't let us do it reluctantly. Let us learn the example of David and his men. And I like it. The Bible says David was commenting on what he has done. Then the leaders caught the spirit. May the leaders catch the spirit. May covenant family leaders catch the spirit. May other ministers catch the spirit. Let the instrumentalists carry the spirit. May queristers, may hosts and hostesses, may every department in this house catch the spirit. The Bible said the leader, the officers, everyone, they came willingly. Say willingly. Sometime in the church, some people zone themselves. You can get intercessors who say, we, we are the ones who pray. We pray for people to give. But we ourselves, we don't give. May the instrumentalists here become givers. Yeah. The musicians said, we, we go for our houses and we sing. And when we have sung, other people do the giving. May the musicians in Christ's temple become givers. May all the officers rise up to give generously. Yeah. Say generously. Yeah. And that was the attitude. The Bible says the elders, the leaders, the officers. And I want to pray. That every member of this church, you know what? Sometimes a project is done and when you ask, people are shouting and screaming but their contribution is none or little. I'm trusting God that the day will enter that new auditorium. Your joy will be because the work has been completed and it's nice. But your greatest joy will be the pride that you have that my money is in this project. My energy is in this project. My prayer have gone into this project. My time, my resources have gone into this project. Then you would thank God and say that even if I'm no more on earth, at least whilst I was on earth, my blood, my toil, my contribution have made this project possible. Will you rise on your feet and let's pray. Give the Lord a clap and a shout. And tell yourself, we'll rise and respond appropriately. We'll rise 
and respond appropriately. And I'm telling you, because of this project, God is going to open doors. God is going to bless you. Because God will never ask you to bring what he hasn't first given you. Ah, you didn't get that. So if you are giving out a season to sow to his project, it means he will first give us the opportunity. Before he asked Moses to ask the people for offering, he has given them favor for wealth transfer. And I see wealth transfer coming. I see money's luck being released. I see your business flourishing. I see opportunities coming your way. So that when God calls you, you'll be able to respond appropriately. Lift up your two hands. Father, in this place this morning, whoever is hearing me, it's an army you are enlisting for the construction of your temple. In the name of Jesus, for David said, for this is the house of God, not for a house of man. You place this in the heart of your servant. That our generation will yet honor you. On a portion of the earth which you created, you've given us another space to raise to your name a house where nations will come and call upon you. I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of generosity will hit this house and even beyond. That people will give more and above that Father this house will be done in a good time to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray and let us say amen. 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 Give the Lord a clap and a shout. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's receive Reverend Osai Bonsu with a clap offering. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Whilst upstanding, let's appreciate Reverend Anthony Kujo. Thank you, sir, for stirring our heart with the challenge to rise to respond to the work of God. God richly bless you. Thank you. Kindly be seated. It's seat time. It is seat time. Hallelujah. It's time for our project offering. And I want you kindly pick up your project offering envelope. Even if you were not in church last week, last two weeks, but you are here today, kindly pick up your project offering envelope because we all want to align our hearts with God's agenda as we commit to build his sanctuary. And this morning's message is timely. It is preparing us to be able to build God's sanctuary. So pick up your envelope as we all prepare to build God's sanctuary. Every member should commit to the project, to give project offering, and every member should stay faithful to the commitment. Remember to be committed and consistent with your giving from today. You are going to be consistent. You are going to stay faithful to your commitment so we can all build the sanctuary of God. And you have to know that all project offering, as our senior pastor said, is dedicated wholly to the Christ Temple East project. And so determined to give better than before and stay faithful to your giving. Say, I will stay faithful to my giving. And I will be consistent in my giving. And I know the Lord will bless me as I build his sanctuary. Hallelujah. The band will minister and you give as the Lord has prospered you.